Are we ready to do that? Oh, well then I'll see you in a few minutes. My name is John Dacre. Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say hallelujah. To your voice and triumphs on And welcome to the Oddity Archive. If you remember, on our last episode, we made a little crack about blip.tv. And as they say, no good deed goes unpunished, and as such, we have been unceremoniously dumped from Blip's roster. Now, until I can sweet-talk Blip into letting us return, we've been forced to temporarily set up shop at Channel 56, Denver's open media voice. <sighs> God, I never thought I'd see the day where I'd be stuck on public access. As it so often happens here at the Archive, our current situation conveniently dovetails into today's topic. Today, it's round three of local television or the public access show. Way back in 1934, the FCC declared the airwaves to be the property of the public. Fast forward to 1968, and the FCC decided that the early cable TV systems weren't operating enough in the public interest, and ruled that the public should have a voice in, or more accurately on, cable TV. Later that year, the first experimental public access broadcast occurred in Dale City, Virginia. In 1972, the FCC mandated that the top 100 cable markets were now required to have three public access channels as part of their service, one for public use, one for educational use, and one for government affairs, or the PEG rule as it's known, i.e. public, educational, and government. There are no real rules for public access, which may be a byproduct of a certain lack of demand for this stuff. Because of this, a fair chunk of public access attracts, shall we say, outsiders. Yeah, carving a pumpkin. jack o -lantern. A jack-o-lantern, my friends, a jack-o-lantern. And of course, we're going to run uh, here at 3, 5, let's get up to a little faster speed, 5, four. And sometimes, things that really should never be broadcast over the public airwaves manage to slip through the cracks. For example, have you ever heard of the Great Satan at Large? Hail Satan. Righteously, mother... You have now. From where I stand, most of the stuff on public access is garbage. Yes, it attracts some fairly eccentric folks, and it can be superficially weird, but more often than not, it just is not equal interesting. And the quote-unquote normal people it attracts are about as exciting as dishwater. To me, most of public access feels like somebody really wanted their own show, got their own show, and then had absolutely no idea how to fill their show. For example... Hi, gay is not sin, and Jesus isn't asking the gay person to change and be straight. Se llama Salvador Dali. Todos dicen, hi Dali! Hi Dali! Gracias, 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 sí. You're coming to... The line of the ride, the hell ride. We were showing you images and everything else, so please keep your hands inside the car.
I couldn't believe that the theater actually had the nerve to put the film in backwards for a few minutes. Minor technicalities, but what I saw of it, it wasn't that bad. Sometimes good things do happen on public access. In some cases, public access provides rare and occasionally the only surviving footage of pioneering bands and public figures, but oh, let's face it, most people don't watch public access for those rare moments of good. They watch public access to see just how unhinged things can get. Now, in the days leading up to the making of this episode, I've been watching my contemporaries on Channel 56, and somehow I'm less than shocked at what I've seen. This is a public affairs show which is inexplicably, and somewhat ironically, entitled Brainiacs. I like to think of host Paula Rhodes as the real-life Emily Latella, albeit not as likable. She spends each hour-long episode shrilly ranting about various topics, often blissfully unaware of the facts, and not to mention constantly meandering from one subject to another. And they're proud that they've been doing this for five years, and they haven't been sleeping inside, and I just cannot imagine. And you can see them everywhere if you really look, but people don't look. This is one of those shows where, if you've seen 30 seconds of it, you've seen the entire series. It's about to be bulldozed for a Walmart that the neighborhood doesn't want. And uh, to me, it looks like a solid brick building. Uh, if they gave me this building today, I'd probably try to replace the windows. And there's probably a lot of work to be done inside. I don't have the heart to tell her that the proposed Walmart was shot down some two months prior to this episode's airing. That and those buildings aren't getting demolished. No! This host calls him, or herself, Sister Who. Apparently no relation to the good doctor. Sister Who is a gay cross-dressing quote-unquote nun who, no pun intended, is the alter ego of Reverend Denver Navarre. We're not sure of what faith the good reverend subscribes to, though. Plus, we're pretty sure that the Denver Navarre name is an alias as well, which would make that an alias of an alias. Unfortunately, this show is a lot more interesting on paper than in practice. This opening sequence is far and away the most interesting thing about this show. Like most public access talk shows, Sister Who just kind of aimlessly plods along with little focus or direction, and given the host's orientations, the direction of the conversation is just a bit predictable. So it begs the question, who is the intended audience here? The conversation is dry and motionless, it sheds no new light on its admittedly narrow topic range, and while it has a slightly surreal bent to it, it's just not enough to make it enjoyable even in an ironic hipster sense either. Or maybe I'm just upset that I can't seem to effectively riff this show. So that you have a transsexual woman who has children with another woman. As myself. Uh, <clears throat> um, in fact, as of today uh, and another 14 days, we'll celebrate our uh, 40 years of marriage. Okay. Uh, now, that you and she decided to continue the marriage? Uh, yes. Of course, I always did, and she... I don't even know what show this is from. The hosts were evidently too cool to tell us. I wish I could say that this footage is just one of my little jokes, but it's not. And this isn't some great Dadaist statement of a show or band either or lack thereof, if we're talking Dadaism. This is what the local art scene is really like around here. That and you can walk into any independent Denver record store and hear this at ear-splitting levels over the PA. Yeah. 
God, I wish I could afford to move. For some reason, this particular public access channel requires all its shows to be interactive to some degree, which means we have to take a few calls. What could possibly go wrong? Archive. You suck, big dick! Oh, Lord. Uh, archive. Hello, baby. Hi. It's so good to hear your sexy voice again. Thank you. Archive. Hi. Hi. Is this Mary? What? Wanna. Mary Wanna. Oh, God. <sighs> Archive. <laughs> Thank you. I hate my life. Oh, uh, hey, Ed. How long is this segment supposed to run? Oh, God. Ben's private hell. No waiting. Oh boy. Archive. This better be good. Hello. 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 Whoa. Goodbye. Would a 15 second delay be too much to ask for? Good lord. Archive. What do you want? Oh, I'm so angry. Oh, oh, fear me. <sighs> oh dear, our phone seems to have gone down. Gosh darn it, we're gonna have to cut this segment short. Oh well, we'll be right back. Oh, wait a minute. This is public access. There are no commercials. Damn it. All right. Now I'd like to discuss my personal favorite public access show. Before American Idol and X Factor and America's Got Talent and all those other soon-to-be-extinct pieces of crap, you had Stairway to Stardom. And mark my words, it will return and run the aforementioned shows out of business. You see tomorrow's stars. Hosted by former nightclub performer Frank Massey and airing on Manhattan Public Access from 1979 to 1991, Stairway to Stardom is that ultra-rare, entertaining public access show. Now, unlike X Factor, etc., there were no cash prizes or contracts to be won from this show. Appearing on it was your prize. Of course, it was the viewers that got the real prize. Because if a son existed now, I swear... I'd bash his brains against the goddamn radiator! It's you, you light up my life. You give me rope to hang myself. You light up my days. And stalk me at night. Next! We have beautiful nylon shag carpeting, starting at only 77 cents per square foot. Raindrops on roses and whiskey. Ah, ghosts! Bright cup. Oh, kettle. never mind. Warm woolen mittens. Brown <sighs> that Laura Branigan sure had a wicked sense of humor. I miss her. Favorite things. Wait, there's more. But only if you order now. Colored ponies and crisp apple strudels. You know, I think I saw this woman perform at my Uncle Vito's, I believe, fourth wedding. These are a few of my favorite things. I think I'll talk over here to the West Coast. On behalf of the almost West Coast, please don't. Sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes. You know, the kind of snowflakes that were so prevalent back in the 80s. These are a few of my favorite things. 
screams when the dog bites oh when the bee stings somewhere liza minnelli is jealous as hell remember my favorite things and then i don't feel like crap next hello louise how are you oh no not you again break a leg and i'll be right back okay okay just gotta load and aim the cannon. Let me uh. to tame you. Ah, she can see me. Let me make you smile. From here to here with a knife. Tricks, some old and then some new tricks. Hey, hey, don't don't block the shot of that hot drummer. Move, move, move. Good girl. I'll and if you're real good oh, Even the tape's trying to commit suicide I want your spirits to climb Just let me oh, Dear God, she's awakened the hellhounds of Satan We'll have a real good time, yes sir No ma'am We'll have a real good time Forgot to get dressed last time. Oh well. Nobody will ever notice. Well, uh, I, I've just been informed that the powers that be require we have a guest on every show. And it just so happens we've got a guest. By phone, it's our liaison from Blip.TV. How you doing, George? Make this quick, Manicotti. Uh, Minot, sir. Whatever. Um, the, the bit of my show that you guys had that problem with... It was just a joke, sir. I, we didn't mean anything by it. I mean, it's just that, uh, well, it's just as much a creative decision as it is a budgetary concern for us. I mean, the Archive is a very analog-minded show, and as such, we still record things on tape. And, you know, that's not cheap. And, you know, well, then we can't afford one of those cool newfangled high-def cameras. So, what do you say, George? 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 You can't come back! Okay. I didn't want to have to play this way, but if we must... We know about the urinal cake thing, George. What? You know, the urinal cake thing, the New York City subway last summer, 10,000 urinal cakes. All right, you can have your show back. Yes. Well, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time as I coax the legendary Henrietta and Myrna Newdorf out of retirement for the ultimate reunion gig. <laughs>